Okay, so here we are. Uh, it's a summer time. We can feel it. You know, it's a summer. Uh, I would say it's as hot as in Africa, yeah. but that's not true. <laughs> it's just hurt. That's not true. You know, this is even more hot than in Africa. You know, Africa is a cool place. You know, it's a cool place, you know. But Serbia, it's a hot place. Oh. Wow. Well, so we are here. Uh, summer is here. We can feel it. Uh, let's be praying for people. Many people have a summer jobs and they are in different places. Uh, but uh, it's great to gather here, uh, even in this number. And wow. Wow. Uh, how do you say God loves you in Serbian language? Bok te voli, right? Wow. Uh, how do you say it in English? God loves you. Uh, uh, you know how to say it in Hungarian? Isten seret teget. It's in Hungarian language. Isten seret teget. Well, there is a story with this. <laughs> we have a very good friend, Pastor Chris Moore, uh, from the United States. And he was here with a group of missionaries and they did some evangelism in Hungary. So they came by bus, they hopped out of the bus and they wanted to tell to people, God loves you. So they got instructions and they were supposed to come and say, Ishten seret teget. But they somehow made mistake and he was teaching everybody in the bus, say after me, say after me. So he taught this group this sentence, but he made a little mistake. So everybody got out of the bus and instead of Ishten seret teget, God loves you, they started to say Ishtvan seret teget, Ishtvan loves you. So they were going to people and they say Ishtvan, it's a male name, loves you. And the people were, who is Ishtvan? Well, you don't know Ishtvan, he loves you, he died for you. <laughs> So, uh, the, like the saying, saying Bogdan yeah, yeah, Bogdan love you, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So, so it's very funny with the languages, yeah. How would you say God loves you in Ethiopian? Jesus, that's what I understand, and the other part. <laughs> Wow, I can't even pronounce it. Sounds beautiful. Sounds yes. beautiful. <laughs> Difficult to pronounce it. Let me try it, okay? Jesus Wim Duhari. Something like this. I don't know. I don't know. You went to Hari. Yeah, exactly. You went to Hari. Jesus, you went to Hari. For both, you went to Aha. Yeah. Wow, so you see, you can even learn speaking in tongues in the church. We have national languages. We have a Czech, Hungarian, Serbian, Ethiopian, you know, like, wow. In Czech, we would say, Bůh tě miluje. Bok, Bůh tě, it's you, and miluje, loves you. Wow. This is beautiful, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Milos, milovat, miluje. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, isn't it amazing uh, that we are so crazy and it's so powerful? You can come to somebody and just say simply, "Did you know that God loves you?" And if you tell them it's so strong, they would be like, "Really? Why?" Why? What happened? What did I do? How do you know? You know, and and how do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. We read it in the Scripture. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling because feelings change. You know, every day, sometimes, few times a day. You know, the feelings change very often. You know, uh, if you are a man. Your feelings change three times a day. 
before the breakfast, before the lunch, and before the dinner, because we are so hungry, you know? And then our feelings change and we are relaxed. If you are a woman, your feelings change 100 times a day. I don't know why, but women are like this. And it's beautiful, you know? It's beautiful. It's part of it. And for us, it's a puzzle. <laughs> you just have to learn it or accept it by faith, you know? It's like, yeah. But we love you, ladies. We love you, ladies. We are greatly loved. And uh, praise God for uh, godly husbands, you know, believing husbands. Because they have uh, someone who teaches them. They have someone who leads them. You know, this is beautiful. So let's start today. So dear God, uh, bless this word. Thank you that you love us. We've heard it in so many languages. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. The Polish language, I remember. Uh, bo kocha ciebie. Bo kocha ciebie. Uh -huh. Kocha, loves. Yeah, so it's in Polish. Uh, uh, Russian, do we know Russian? Gaspod lubić ciebie. Yeah. Yeah, Lubiki Bia, that's Russian. Yeah. Uh, how many more languages do we know? Arabic. Arabic? Yeah. Allah Ihibuk. Allah Ihibuk. Allah Ihibuk. I, I know Allah is God. Yeah. And it, wow, so even in Arabic, God loves you. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. This is like the book of Acts. They spoke in Arabic, Persian, Median language, you know, Libyan language, Greek, Roman, and they were spreading the gospel. Handful of people, 12 disciples, just sharing Christ. This is beautiful. You know, I'm just realizing how powerful we are. Although we may feel weak. Sometimes, right? Who feels strong today? Who is strong, you know? And who is weak? This is something that I want to touch a little bit today, that I want to speak about. So if you would turn with me into 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And here we have a Apostle Paul speaking about something in his life and 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 Paul says unless I should be exalted above measure through abundance of the revelations you know Paul had revelations of a third heaven he was in a third heaven, in the presence of God, in the presence of angels. He was there and he received these revelations. And he says that he wouldn't be proud about it. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, to trouble me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Wow, it's interesting. You know, people run after knowledge, people run after education, and it's mainly the status quo or a pride. Well, I have a Yale University, you know, I have a Harvard University. You know, it's, it lifts you up, your education. What's your education? Well, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a, a cleaning lady, you know with a mop and mopping the floors. Well, but I have a Harvard education. You see? Just the knowledge, this achievement, lifts up people a lot. It's a pride. I mean, I'm not against education, you know. We do Bible school. We have a Bible school in Baltimore. Uh, education is great. And by the way, there is many greatly educated people who are humble, you know, so it's totally perfect. But there is this problem, you know, it leads there many times. And that's why Paul says, because he received these 
revelations from God. Just to keep him humble, he has this problem. Lest he should be exalted above measure. Wow, do you have problems in your life? I know you don't. I'll tell you, I do. We, we all do, right? Here and there. And we pray, God, take it away. You have the power. You are great, God. You open the Red Sea. You can do miracles. Just take it away. And sometimes God will say, yes, and he will take it away. But sometimes God will say, no, I keep it there for a purpose. Because it will keep you humble. God, I have this problem. And because you have this problem, then you are calling unto me. And it keeps you humble. Because of this problem in your life, you are dependent on me. Because of this problem, you are, we could say, crippled, weak. You are not able to do things on your own as you wished. And you need my help. But God, I thought you will solve all my problems when I become Christian, when I believe. God says, I, I could, I can. But maybe I want to work more in your heart than in your circumstances. We have a, in Baltimore, in our church, there is a number of a businessman. And there is one man who, is, uh, who was really blessed in his business, like beyond measure, you know. And he says... We have a church in Baltimore, over 1,000 people, members. And he says, I have a means I could solve all the problems of all the people in the church. He says, I, I have the money. I can solve all the problems of the people in the church. And he says, but I have to pray that I wouldn't play God in the people's lives. He said, I cannot help everybody. I have to pray. And sometimes God says, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hold, hold on back. Don't do it. Because if you help that person, he will not learn the lesson. Sometimes the problems as here are from God. I mean, not that God would create them for a purpose, but he uses them. He allows it. Well, but I thought when I believe I'll be... Like all these happy Christians, you know, dancing, worshipping. And I have my problems. Well, that's not a problem. You can worship and dance while you have your problems. How is this possible? Because it continues here. And he says in verse 8, For this thing, this problem, I sought the Lord thrice, three times. That it might depart from me. Three times he was praying, God, help me with this. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Oh. You know, these words, uh, it shows something about this weakness you know sometimes people are afraid to be weak people are af afraid to admit they are weak because in our society you know you have to put up on a mask you have to be like young rich successful beautiful witty funny whatever everything together and if you have some weakness, you know, you are hiding it. You know what's the, what's the most popular game among the children? Hide and seek. You know, you can play it anywhere. Just find a chair or behind the corner. You know what's the most popular game among the adults? Hide and seek. It's the same. You are hiding many things. 
we are hiding ourselves behind many things. We are hiding our problems. We don't want to admit it to anybody, not to God. Genesis chapter 3. You know, Adam and Eve, they have sinned. You remember the story, right? Somebody said, when I'm in heaven, I'll go to them and I'll talk to them. What did you do, Adam? Ah, no. Adam and Eve have sinned. And what happens? They start to play these games. Hide and seek. Because God comes and he says, Adam, where are you? He is hiding. Very interesting. Now think about it. There is a God who loves you. And you know it, you love him back. And then something happens and you start to hide yourself before this God that loves you. Before this God that you used to love also, now you are hiding before him. And you are making false coverings, fig leaves, you know, sowing fig leaves, false covering, lies. Yeah, you know, but, but you know, lies, excuses. The one that loves you. What happened that suddenly you are hiding? What's the story? You know, the person was listening to the devil. Before it was everything okay. God loves you and you love God. But then you start to listen to the devil, which says, God is different. Don't be fooled. Your ear changes your sight, how you see things. Let's be careful. They listen to the devil and now they see differently. There's a God that loves you and now they're hiding before him. And realizing they are naked. Shame. Fear. Actually, they became, you know, they became mentally sick. This is called paranoia. There is no reason to be afraid of God. And suddenly you are so afraid. And you go into fear, hiding, false coverings, blaming. My fault, God? It's your fault because you gave me Eve, which talked to the devil, and, and I'm the innocent. Blame game. Wow. You know, totally mentally sick, paranoia, lying, you know, blaming. Instead of just coming up to the light with the truth and admitting. God, you are right, I'm weak in this area. I failed. God, you are right, I lied. And you know what God will do? The penalty of sin is death, but he died for us. That's the redemption for the sin. We spoke about this many times. What's the solution? God's solution for sin. Genesis 3. You know, Adam and Eve, they start to listen to the devil. They start to be afraid of God. But God comes and he says in verse 21, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Unto Adam and his wife he made coats of skins and clothed them. What is it? What kind of coats of skins? He gave them covering of the Lamb of God. God killed a lamb, which is a picture of the sacrificial lamb throughout all the Old Testament, which is pointing to the Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God who died for us. God says, you made sin, you made mistake. You know what's my solution? And in many churches you will hear, lightning and thunder will struck you. But God says, my solution for your sin is my death. I take your sin upon me, upon myself. That's my solution because I love you. So why are you hiding? Just come on the light. Just come and learn of me. Learn my character. 
We need the scripture, we need the Bible, because our thinking is so twisted. I always learned when you do something, hide it, deny it. You know, you learn this in the school, in the first grade. Did you do it? No. Did you eat the chocolate? No. Your mouth is like full of chocolate. You know. Did you eat the chocolate? No. It's evident, but you are just... Just admit it. Say, I was weak. I'm sorry. And you know what? When we are weak, then he is strong. Because then we reconnect. Then we have a fellowship with him again. And when we say, I am weak, God, help me, God can do it. That's what it says here. For my strength is perfect in your weakness. When I realize, God, I have a fear, I cannot do this. I turn to Him. And then it's He in my life doing it. You know, the strong people who don't need God... You know how people say God and Christianity is a crutch for weak people? You've heard this one. You know, many people say it. it's a crutch for weak people because you can't do it on your own. And you know what? It's true. I can admit it. We need Him. But you are so strong that you don't need Him. That's weakness. You will never admit it. You will never admit you are a sinner, you are lost. You are a liar, you are a cheater, you are selfish. Are you selfish? No, 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 don't, don't give me the answer. I know that you are not. At times, you know, sometimes, you know. In our new nature, we are not. We have God. That's why we are strong. We are strong. Not because we are perfect, but what it says here, His strength is made perfect in our weakness. When God says, go to Serbia as a missionary, we can say, but how? I'm so weak. And God says, thank you for realizing it. It will be me who will do it. Look at the lives of missionaries and we can name few. Hudson Taylor, you know, a missionary to inland China. David Livingston missionary to uh, South Africa and Central Africa, uh, Jim Elliot and Elizabeth Elliot. These people, all these people, C.T. Stutt, Robert Moffat, you know, Amy Carmichael, and we could name, there's a list of missionaries. In one sense, they were very weak people. That's why they were so strong. Because they came to God and they said, I can't do it. And God says, I will do it. Now you are strong. When you jump on me, when you cast yourself on me, when you lean on me, do not lean on your own understanding. Right? The psalmist says, let's not lean on our own understanding. Sometimes you will learn this lesson soon. When you have a baby, you know, the baby knows how to do things. And you want to help him, and the little baby, ah, my, my, mama, myself. Ah, ah. They know how to do things. They think they know. You know? They think they know everything. They are like three years old, and they know everything. And wait when they are 14 years old. Then they think they know everything. We've been there, right? We've been there. And then when you are like 18, well, you know everything. Like, nobody can give you any advice. No. We need God and His help. We need the Father in our life to help us. We need God just to say, shh, shh, come here. No more hiding. By the way, I see everything anyway. I see what's behind your back, you know. You know, the money is missing on the table and the kid is like this. I didn't take the money. Can you show me your hand? Can you show me the other one? Now show me both of them. <laughs> and I'm starting to cry. <laughs> yeah, but we are so... Everybody knows it. We need God. And this is our help. 
You know, we don't preach strong Christianity. The church of holiness. Be as holy as God is. You know what we preach? Just come unto him and tell him who you are. And he will bless you. Because then he will be with you. Our holiness comes from him anyway. Less of me, more of God. What am I revealing in my life? I want to reveal him. God, I can't do it. I, I, I don't have the strength. I have a fear. Would you please do it? I can, I can step aside and you do it, please. And God says, okay, I will. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So when we find out our weakness, when we admit our weakness, then we are strong because it's God. The problem is denial. The problem is when we don't want to admit it. There is a story in Judges chapter 7. Gideon goes to war. And he has an army of, of warriors. And you know, if you, if you understand the military tactics a little bit, you know, the number of a soldiers mean a lot. You know, when you have, a, when you have a, uh, some combat two armies meet, and you know, the number of a soldiers mean a lot. Because it means there is, for example, the ratio 1 against 10. Meaning you, one person, have to fight against ten, you know. So the number means a lot. But not for God. Because in this story, in Judges 7, chapter 7, God did something great with Gideon. Something unexpected. It says here, And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, you know, they were drinking from a river, will I save you and deliver the Midians into your hand. So God reduced the army of Gideon to 300. You know, we would say God needs a lot of people. But before this battle, God reduced the number. Because now the people need God. There was a big army. And God sent them all home. And he says, I will use just a few of you. And then it says later on, that the people would know that the salvation comes from the Lord. It's not your own power. I will use this weak army... And I will do a great victory. But it will be my victory. And everybody will see it. I like it. That Christianity is for us. That God is for us. We don't have to play any religion. Just come as you are. It's a beautiful sentence in many songs. Come as you are before God. And God will do it. God will do it. In our life. In a Psalm 121 verse 2. It says. There is a psalmist praying. And. Uh, he's uh, looking for help. You know. See. 121. Verse 2, and he's looking for help and calling unto God, and he says, My help comes from the Lord. When we realize this, my help comes from the Lord. Have you ever been in a situation when you need help with educating the children? Now, in our case, we have amazing children, you know. They... they love instruction, you know, they are very obedient, and I mean it, really beautiful. Sometimes you need help, and where does the help come from? You know, when they become disobedient. There are many ways how to do it. One method is, 
My wife tells me, don't do this, don't do this. One method is to raise your voice. You can start to scream. That's one method how to do it. Then everybody obeys. Uh, or you can threaten them. If you don't obey, one month without the phone, or I'll turn off the Wi-Fi in our house, you know, off. You know, a threat. You can threaten a person. You can blackmail them, you know. Or the help comes from the Lord. You can turn to God and say, God, help me to show your character and work that character in me and in others. Wow. My help comes from the Lord. This is, this is the victory when we realize this. When we realize that weakness is not a problem. Denial of a weakness and games around it are the problem. Not the weakness. Because he says when we are weak, then his strength is made perfect. And Paul says in verse 10, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. He takes pleasure in troubles. Have you ever been persecuted for your faith? You know, even in a small scale, by friends, unbelieving friends, by family members, by somebody who doesn't like you, it's not, it's not a nice situation. But Paul says, I take pleasure in it. Paul, are you okay? Are you normal? But he explains, even in necessities, distress, necessities, what it means, when you are lacking things, when you are lacking things, you know, when you don't have enough financial means, you don't have enough money, you don't have enough forgiveness. You have enough love for somebody. This is an amazing place to be. When you are not self-sufficient. When you need help. You know, you come to church and the people may say, Boy, he needs help. Look at him. Hallelujah! That's the victory. If you need help, you are victorious. If you think you can make it on your own, that's wrong. Because he says, I take pleasure in these problems. And then he adds, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. And let's remember this. Because our help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121 verse 2. And Paul says, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. When I am weak, then I am strong. When I realized that I'm naked and I was covering myself with the fig leaves and playing the hide and seek and uh, uh, where are you, Adam? Oh, God, oh, you were looking for me. What happened to you? No. Just coming on the light and saying, God, help me. And he says, I'm here for you. I love you. I will do it. Let's, work with, let's walk together. Just believe me. Have faith in me. I am, I am loving God. God loves you. God loves you. Ishten seret teget. Allah. Yeah, you know, I can finish it, but we heard it. You know, ma- many languages. Bok kocha tebe. Buch te ma rad. Bok te voli. God loves you. God loves you. Let's not be in paranoia. The one that loves me and the one that I loved because I listened to the devil now, I am hiding. Let's not, you know, in the jump tan, the sheep know his voice and the stranger's voice they will not follow. The condemnation, the devil, our, our dirty, twisted conscience by fall. Let's not listen to it that we have no value, that you are not worthy, worthy of anything because no I can admit it I am a sinner I am failure I am weak I, I am I'm weary I'm tired 
but I have God and my help comes from God and then he says now you are strong because we have God my strength comes from God we have God that's why we are strong you are so strong and as we said in the beginning this is like the Pentecost we have the message for saving people and look in this few number how many languages we spoke we are so powerful you know we can just love our neighbor we can love our families we can love the stranger across the street we can love the lady that brings us a coffee we can just tell them in many languages thank you very much god bless you amen